Hello, welcome to NAM 2014 Preview Day. We're deep in the bowels of the Hilton Hotel at an uh, undisclosed location with Amos Gaines from Moog Music. What Hello. Are you showing us? I'm here to show you the new Moog Sub 37. This is the latest analog synthesizer from Moog and uh, it has a number of new features. It's based on the excellent sub-fatty synthesizer. As you can see there, it says paraphonic analog synthesizer, where the sub-fatty was labeled monophonic, and that is just one of the new tricks that is on offer with this instrument. We started with the sub-fatty synthesizer, and it's been very beloved, but a lot of people gave us the feedback that they wanted more keys, uh, more like the little fatty, which had a full three-octave keyboard. And so when we started with the brief of take the sub-fatty synthesizer, expand it out to 37 keys, and then you have all of this extra panel real estate, what are you going to do with it? And so we decided to go all out and do everything that we could based on customer feedback and interaction and all of the things that people were wanting from our instruments. So we got not perfunctioning, a lot of the, because of the sub-fatty, there was a lot of stuff under the hood, right? That's right. The panel being as compact as it was, we wanted to, we wanted to um, maximize the feature set, but uh, once you cram all of those extra features in and sort of hide them behind a smaller panel, uh, it means it's not as immediate and it's not as tweakable. And so all of those uh, hidden extra features that are within the sub-fatty synth engine we brought to the surface and brought to the panel with a knob or a button per function on the sub-37. Is the architecture the same then? It's extremely similar. It is, it is very much the same basic architecture of two voltage-controlled, free-running analog oscillators, a noise source, an external input, and a sub-oscillator. Um, however, we did add one new analog feature to this particular sound engine, um, which is the feedback control, and that's here on the external input. There's a dedicated knob for external input, but when nothing is plugged into the external in, it acts as a feedback very similar to the classic Minimoog Model D trick of feeding one of the outputs back to the filter input. And this gives a whole new range of incredibly saturated, rich, overdriven tones. Is that in addition to the multi-drive then? That is in addition. That is in series with the multi-drive. It's really... Um, uh, there's just a beastly amount of, of distortion and different characters. What's so nice about having both of them in series is that you get all of this different range of, of a, a continuum of different kinds of feedback and overdrive and saturation, uh, and you can really tailor how you want it. And so because the f feedback is before the filter and the multi-drive is uh, sort of wrapped around the filter, you can really get a lot of interaction between these different types of sounds. So I'm going to start with a very simple sound here and just demonstrate. Here's a single sawtooth oscillator. We'll bring in a second. Second sawtooth oscillator. And right now this is a very pure and clean tone. And so we know what the multi-drive sounds like. quite nice. And then as you bring up the feedback, you get a whole new tone. And uh, you can actually feed all the way back into DC, into self-oscillation, which is really very gnarly sounding. And right there on the edge. Add in a little sub-oscillator. And another new feature of the uh, Sub-37 is that the configurable slope of the filter, this has been in the Little Fatty and the Sub Fatty synthesizer, but in both cases it was down uh, a menu or, or a hidden feature, it wasn't right here on the panel, so you can control... Let's see, this sound may already be too like obese and ridiculous to hear the effect of the different filter poles, but we'll close that up. That's a nice four pole sound. And you can hear in one pole mode, which is 6 dB per octave on the slope. A lot of tonal characteristic in the actual filter. Right, yeah, and, it, and it's, it's just the subtle interactions that you can get between the feedback, the filter, the drive, the filter slope. This is really, uh, it's just full of tone coloration. And the other thing is, obviously, it's duophonic, right? That's almost right. And there's been a bit of a chatter on the internet. Right. It's um, duophonic 
if you aren't, if you don't, if you're not on a very uh, technical level of understanding, duophonic immediately tells you what you get, which is two independent pitches. The reason that I'm hesitant to call it duophonic is that a true two-voice instrument would have a complete signal path per voice, a complete set of oscillators, filter, envelopes, VCAs, and in this case, uh, because it is based on the subfatty, it is one monophonic synthesizer voice where you have independent control over the pitch of the two oscillators. So, but you can play the two notes separately, so you, you get paraphonic. That's paraphonic right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So it's two note paraphonic is, is, is what it is. And let me turn down the feedback just a little bit. And so it really does open up a whole lot of new playing techniques that pure monophonic synthesizers don't offer. Um, you know, it's not, it won't let you play three voice chords, but you can play a lot of intervals very dynamically, and you're not limited to a fixed interval like you are with a traditional monosynth, where you can tune in a third or a fifth, and all you're playing is thirds and fifths up and down the keyboard. And can you set the amplitude retrigger mode to work? how you want it because I mean it, absolutely like next note or first note or that's right yeah you have you have the ability to to re-trigger or not and in fact the envelopes on the sub 37 uh, are worth a little bit of our time all by themselves because they are truly remarkably fully featured and they've got a lot of fun performance uh, abilities that have been added so as you can see in addition to the four knobs there's this row of five buttons under each envelope and these control features, such as you were describing, with multi-triggering, whether the, the envelope resets to zero when you first play a note or whether it continues from the previous envelope level. Uh, there's a sync, which is clock syncable LFO, or envelope times, looping and latch on, which simply turns, turns it on uh, full on independent of the keyboard. So you really, it's sort of like, you know, that you have a somewhat modular set of envelope generator modules that can be running completely independently of the sequencer of, or if you're playing on the keys. So for instance, if we turn on the amplitude envelope. That's the gain. Right, that's the initial gain. And of course, um, you could, we now also have these nice on off switches in the mixture section, which are very nice for quickly bringing different tones in and out. And so if you want to use this as an external processor for your other instruments, this is very nice. You don't have to tape a key down or, or, or anything else. You can just turn on the gate and, and it's processing sound full on. Now another thing you can do is you can loop the envelopes, which is very nice. And the uh, rate goes uh, all the way up into the sort of kilohertz range and then of course down very slowly. And exactly, yeah, you can use that to do pulses. And this is, so I'm not playing, I'm not running the arpeggiator. That's, this is independent of these things. And you can do it in concert with them. So. so you can get some very nice, interesting sort of amplitude modulation, pinging, running sort of effects. And uh, there's really, there's enough uh, sonic room to get lost in here. Right now, I'm pretty sure that we have, yes, we have both a looping amplitude and filter envelope, and they're running freely independent of one another. So you can get some really bizarre sounds going. I'll turn off looping here. So now we're just listening to, oh, we've got some LFOs, some filter envelope. All right, and so within the envelope generators, there's truly a ton of stuff going on, but that's not even the most interesting aspect of the control there's panel more. necessarily. But wait, there's more, as they say. There is also, in addition to a fully featured modulation bus that uh, begins very similarly to the design that we set up with the subfatty. You've got continuously variable pitch amount and filter amount. You will notice that they are bipolar controls here. This is an innovation uh, on the sub-37, is that all of the modulation destinations are fully positive or negative going, independent of one another, which really opens up the ways that you can move around the sound. So we also, since we had the panel real estate and we really wanted to give people a lot of goodies with this instrument, there are two mod buses in parallel. And they're fully independent and they can also operate on one another. 
you'll notice uh, in addition to the pitch and filter amounts, there is a programmable modulation destination here. And this selector picks from uh, a few of the most common choices. And then there are additionally further programmable modulation destinations. Um, you know, even as much as there is on this panel, we still found additional things to tuck away in some menus. Uh, okay, but, so we, um, you know, but we tried to make sure that it was, it was truly the most esoteric stuff and that, uh, that the panel alone would be sufficient to get through, you know, say 90% of your sound design tools that you would want to do. But uh, so you have programmable mod sources in addition to a multi-waveform LFO that has triangle, square, saw, ramp, and sample and hold. You also have the filter envelope as a mod source and then programmable, as it says, which is an additional list of sources such as the key pitch from the sequencer or, um, did I mention aftertouch? I haven't mentioned aftertouch. No. This synth has aftertouch. My pet subject. Yes. The keyboard has aftertouch. The keyboard directly on it has aftertouch. And you can use the aftertouch within the modulation buses to affect how much modulation you have. You can set up, for example, uh, one of my favorites is to uh, set LFO rate as your destination, and then you can use the pressure to speed up and slow down the LFO, which is a really fun dynamic performance effect. Um, yeah, each, each of the uh, mod buses can modulate the other LFO as its destination. Um, can you set up kind of almost FM type stuff? You though? can, you really can. Um, and I would say, as I said, between the looping envelopes, which can be modulation sources, and the two onboard LFOs, that's four modulation sources, all of which can go up sort of into audio range. Um, and you can really make some, some bizarre and silly sounds. It's, it's, it's quite a lot of fun. Um, I'll have to demonstrate some at some point here, which uh, let me know if I should stop talking and start tweaking at any point. Have a bit of a tweak now. Sure, sure, let's do that. All right, let's play with the mod buses just a little bit. I'll just uh, set up a sound here. And now we'll get some modulation going on. So I'll start with the mod one bus and I'll just set up a nice sawtooth waveform. And right now, so that's positive sawtooth modulation of the filter, and you can switch that around into negative modulation. So that's very nice. Turn that down, and you can now directly modulate the VCA level as well, which is nice. So, so you can get, a, get sort of pulsing sounds going on, that's very fun. And one nice thing that you can do there is you can bring in the arpeggiator and you can synchronize the LFOs to the arpeggiator so that you can have uh, modulations that are stepping in time with your sequence. So there's a nice little simple arpeggiation. And now we'll get some modulation going in time with it. Turn up some resonance so you can hear it a bit. Bring in some feedback. And now we'll switch that over to uh, waveform modulation. And uh, just a moment, I'll set up another little thing here, which is we'll use this second LFO, and we'll use it to modulate the rate of the first LFO. And if they're synchronized to one another, that gives you a very nice effect because you can actually sweep through the different clock divisions of the LFO. So you can modulate the speed of the LFO without losing synchronization. So we'll set up our same little pattern there again. Oop, turn on latch. There we are. Add a little bit of envelope too. All right. So there's our one LFO. And now... Turn down that a little bit. And so you can hear. Yeah. Absolutely it is.
And so in a little short space like this, um, if I can perhaps be forgiven for not stumbling upon the very coolest possible sounds, but there truly are so many in here, let's turn on hard sync a little bit and do some modulation. The pitch modulation you can send to one oscillators one and two or just one or just two. So you've got fully independent control uh, when you're modulating the oscillators. And as well in duo mode, you have full independent control of your uh, um, keyboard tracking for oscillator two. In addition to drone mode, you can turn keyboard control off for oscillator two and uh, turn down the modulation just a little bit here. There's so much of it. So you can really get a rich range of tones out of there. It seems a lot more immediate, doesn't it, as well? I think that the, the, the sub fact is great, but the fact that you've got the status of all of, the, all of this really helps absolutely. where you're starting from. That's absolutely right. You can tell pretty much at a glance what's going on in each of the sections, you know, just treat it as an individual module and see, aha, this is the status of all of these amazing things that are affecting the sound. Being able to see all of that at once really does help your sound design, it helps your ability to just dive in and, and be really immediate with the sound. I know you hit the noise source there. Is it just pink or sorry, just white, or do you get a? Uh, it is. It's, it's voiced the same as the noise on the sub fatties, which is definitely a sort of a darker, bassier noise. There's still a lot of highs in it, as you can hear. If you turn up the resonance, it takes out some of the lows. And so you can really you can adjust the spectrum of the noise quite a bit using the filter, using the different filter poles and the resonance especially. So as you can hear, it's almost, you get sort of like a waterfall effect. It really has a lot of body to it, which is nice. You can use it for, you know, floor toms and, you know, thunder crashes and sort of things like that. It's not just a hissing sound. It really gives you the full spectrum. Hissing sounds also still possible. And we've got memory locations across the panel here, right? That's so correct, yes. There are these 16 quick preset buttons, and there's also a bank button as well. So uh, the idea is that you really have organized 16 banks of 16 presets. So you've got, you know, within two or so button presses, access to 256 presets. And um, these 16 step buttons laid out in a row, preset buttons, I should say, laid out in a row like that, uh, a lot of people, as soon as they see them, they think, aha, those are for programming an XOX style step sequencer. And these are early days. This is still a prototype. And so at this very moment, they're only preset buttons. But, but, but I mean, that's the beauty of the digitally controlled analog is that you can, you can precisely. OS update these kind of things. That's right. And, and I, would, I would wager that by the time this ships, we should have uh, you know, full sequence stepping here. There is, um, you know, there is already a step sequencer functionality enabled. You can see the arpeggiator pattern knob here. You've got up, down, in order, and random are your regular arpeggiator patterns. And then there's also step and record mode. And right now, the record mode works in a very simple uh, sort of SH style where you just play in notes, it keeps track of them, and then it'll play them back to you. So let's uh, get something that actually has some pitches. So that's probably not an ex even number of beats, but not bad. Can you swing it? Um, not yet, but I'm glad you asked. We'll probably be able to put that in uh, to this nice preset edit page. This is my get out of jail free card for any feature that didn't make it onto the panel is preset edit, which will allow you to get in and access fun extras that, you know, either they didn't quite make the cut for the panel or there wasn't physically room or it didn't come up until later, such as can you swing the arpeggiator? Brilliant suggestion. Love to do that. But even as it is, you can still have quite a bit of fun with it.
I think uh, the plan is to street for under 1,500 US dollars and should be shipping in May. That is the plan. You're absolutely welcome. <laughs> <laughs>